am Zachary Fowler, winner of Alone Season 3, and you're watching 87 Days. The complete reenactment of all I did on Alone, but as if I did it here in Maine with the resources that I find here in Maine. This is episode 6, and we're going to build the shelter. It's time to do it. The shelter I did out on Alone was out of bamboo, double thick walls, insulated with all the material I shaved off the bamboo. I'm going to do the same sort of thing here, but with the main style to it of doing it hurdle waddle walls, just like that, like the garden beds uh, that we made. That's where I started all this, doing this for our raised garden beds. And uh, I'm going to strip the sticks down. I got to start by digging a uh, fire pit here, and uh, so that it don't, uh, it's easier to throw the dirt out that way. And then later I'll take you out, and we're going to do some more fishing with the duck hunter. So let's get at it. So I got myself a marking stick here, and it's like two feet longer than I am tall. I want to make sure that there's enough room for me to lie down on it. So I'm going to probably make it not not quite round. I'll make one side a little flatter, and then it'll be kind of rounding out from there. So it'll be like overly weird shaped. And the fire pit is going to be on one side, and then I'll have my bed along the other side, just like I did out there. But out there, I had that giant tree. You, right here, you can see that giant massive tree, which was a thermal mass and gave me all kinds of warmth because it absorbed the energy of the fire and the heat that was in there. So it would, if I didn't have a fire, it would probably take a day or two before the temperature actually went down low enough and there it started freezing again. It was that well insulated in that thermal mass of that log. Once I got it up to temp, it actually helped keep my shelter warm. So I'm going to lay this out, start digging the fire pit. And, uh, and I'll be able to throw some stakes in it, which is going to be one of the hardest parts getting this thing started. Patagonia soil was four feet deep of topsoil, soft, rich, dark soil. And all I had to do was take that bamboo, which was already slick when you cut a sharp end on it, and just push it into the ground. <laughs> yeah, all right. Make some stakes, mark it out, dig a fire pit. So I've marked out some of these must-have points, I feel like, you know, that way my bed will be over there, doorway there, fire pit here, and I'll sit here to the side of the door, and the door kind of in the middle on either side of my bed. And then I'm going to bend a couple sticks around here to find the rest of the points for where the wall sticks will end up. This is what took the long part of building a shelter every day going up there for, I don't know how many days it took me, but uh, I'm thinking like 20 days, you know? Heading up over the hill, bringing, that's why I made that water bottle. You can see the video there, it's an older one, where I made the water bottle because I needed water clothes. That eight stories up over the hill for four or five hours every day working on it. But all those bamboo, I stripped the fur off of the ones that went on the inside, so my inside of my shelter and looked all nice and smooth, like a nice smooth basket. And I'll do the same here, and on the outside, I think I'm going to try and use reeds, and, um, and I'll leave them furry. All right, so the doorway will be here, or right here, somewhere like that. Fire pit will be here. It doesn't look all that big, but here's where I'm gonna make my bed. There's plenty of room here. We can either be up here further. 
I got my bed. I got some headspace below. I mean, this side and the fire pit's right there. I'll make some rock wall here so I can just have some firewood there and put it into the fire at night. So I think I'll probably end up throwing, I'll throw some of my dirt over into here so I can make a nice level bed again. Time to dig, dig the fire pit. There's already a big rock here. So I'm gonna incorporate that as my thermal mass of my fireplace and the start of it. And I, I do not like dig after, that was so spoiled in Patagonia. The soil there, so easy to dig, so much fun to dig. This is, it's like paved with rocks and roots and, ugh. Shovel's gonna need a sharpening after this, holy cow. Boy, a pickaxe might be a better 10 item choice if, you, if you're trying to uh, survive in Maine. All right, I think that's a pretty good start to it. I got the fire pit area started. I'm gonna put all this soil up here where my bed's gonna be. I'm gonna make it kind of a raised bed of packed earth. I might even put a couple more little pieces of uh, hurdle waddle weaving uh, of the like, kind of like the shelter walls right here so I can make my bed up higher. Because uh, when on really cold nights, I like to take the dirt and dig out a hole and put hot rocks in there, happy rocks. Call them. So much you can do with happy rocks. Put hot rocks in your pockets when you're going down and baiting your lines during the winter so their hands aren't frozen. All kinds of stuff. We'll get into that as time goes on. And uh, so I want to go do some fishing though. This digging's fun, <laughs> but I want to get something with a duck hunter. So I'm out of here. Let's do some fishing. Everybody's out here on their way to work. I'm out here on the river, trying to catch a fish with a duck hunter. Yeehaw. Out there on the show, uh, I didn't pick treble hooks because treble hooks were considered to be three hooks, be so uh, I didn't pick any. But I think next time I would pick a treble hook. So today I've rigged this with a treble hook to increase the chances of when the snare goes off, if it's in the fish's mouth, boom nails it or even if they hit it again after it right after it goes off or something they catch themselves on the treble hook more likely than uh, a single hook so let's get her in the water and see if we can't catch a trout Not the trout I was hoping for. A little, uh, I don't know, shiner or something here. And uh, nailed it right on, right on launch. I pushed the boat out and boom, wham, that little hook set. I think that treble might be the way to win. You know, even though it chews up some of my hooks when I'm allowed 25 hooks out there. And uh, it would mean at least having three treble hooks would increase the amount of catches, I think. I'm gonna put this little guy back and try again. All right, well that's another one. I keep catching these. I think they're lake chub, not shiner. Uh, or um, brook shrub, chub, chub, shrub, chub. But 
geez, six or seven of these is definitely a meal. So I think I'm gonna keep a couple and uh, make a meal out of them, fry up some fish. And uh, I'm gonna use what I did out there when I didn't find enough worms and stuff like that, or if I caught a fish, I always use the gills first. So I'm gonna cut the gills out of this guy, as he's a bait fish and it's legal, and uh, use the gills to catch some more for my dinner. And that is, this came in very handy for that. They multi-tool little scissors, you could snip them right out of there. There's a couple things you can use on here. The eyeballs on a bigger fish that hook onto a hook, they're really, uh, they really, the hook really holds them really well, so they work pretty good. Uh, inside the stomachs, you can use what you find inside the stomachs. If you find snails or caddisfly or or nymphs of um, dragonflies, all that stuff can go back on the hook and catch you more fish. But I found the gills, the way they hook on there, they hold on to the hook really tight. You don't usually come out and find them missing the next day, but they only work for like six hours until all of the the blood's kind of out of them. And then they're just the fish lose interest in them. They're not they're not as fresh and and uh, appealing. So let's catch some fish on that. Well, <clears throat> hey, beggars can't be choosers. Got another one. Well, I think my fishing is done here for the day. I caught several of those chubs. I just saw this giant snapper and. I really don't feel like catching him and then having to leave a hook stuck in his mouth because I am not not looking forward to trying to get a hook out of a snappers. And he was big. This I tried to get up and get the camera on him, but man, I think that's almost the biggest one I've ever seen. Just comes, you know, head and just paddling up the river, like looking for dinner. Got a little one. Not much, but I get enough of these and it's a solid dinner, right? Well, if nothing, she's consistent. Yep, just got another one. What a, what a good day. Three of them, that wouldn't be bad. I could live with three. Three would be a good night. And have a nice little meal. So, yeah, the duck hunter works. Just caught fish in a couple different places. Not the big fish I was looking for, but I'm gonna keep it up, keep modifying her. The back end of it here, the line keeps tangling in the propeller a little bit, so I'm gonna make some outriggers for that try and prove the uh, catching capability of this thing. And uh, yeah, we'll work on the shelter some more next time. So thanks for watching. Fowler out. We likes it raw and wriggling. <laughs> no we don't. We likes it in stew. Fish head soup. Fish head soup. Fish head soup, too bad you taste like poop. <laughs>